Okay, I'm going to show you how to do a couple different processes in data set tools. Um, so I have a couple other videos on uh, some of the more basic processes um, that you can take a look at this week, today, whenever, I don't know, time doesn't exist on YouTube. Um, this uh, Today I'm going to look at uh, how to use Canny and Canny Picks to Picks. Um, so Canny is a process that is used in computer vision. It uh, is used to create edges. So if you just do a Google image search for uh, Canny edges, um, or canny edge detection, and then you go to images, you'll see exactly what these look like. So there is a built-in process inside of Dataset Tools now to produce these sort of images. Uh, and these will be good for maybe some things like uh, cyclogan or munit, or they're particularly good for picks to picks. Um, so uh, edges to cats, which I've shown extensively, is um, basically that was built to use uncanny. So you take a cat image and you produce a uh, canny edge, and then you train those two together. So today I'm going to show you how to do that in the dataset tools library. Um, this is a pretty recent feature, so you might need to do a git pull um, if you have dataset tools already existing in your library. Um, the way to do that is, so let's just go here. I'm just gonna copy this path, which is my dataset tools folder, and I'm gonna go cd dataset tools. Um, and then you're just gonna do git pull um, right from inside that directory. And um, in this case, all I updated was my readme file, but you'll get a couple other files it'll pull down. Cool, so let's look at how to do this. So um, I have a folder here of some images that are uh, pretty small. They're just like these sort of painty, textury images. Um, and I'm gonna get candy edges from those. So the first way we can look at is we can look at how to do this. Um, so let's just build up our tool set here. So Python data set tools. Um, my cat yelling at me, sorry. Um, <laughs> Python dataset tools. So the first thing we want to do is we want to set the process type, and we're going to use Canny. Uh, next thing we need to do is set the input folder, um, and we're just going to do that. So I just copied and pasted this folder. Um, the output folder is going to be um, dot slash output um, w dash Canny slash. Uh, now, pretty much all the other tools that you could use apply here as well. So um, you can use the resize tool. Uh, you can change the file extensions, which I'm going to do just to um, not blow up my hard drive because um, I do have a lot of images here. Um, most of the tools that you already might use previously will exist here. Um, you can't really use some of the cropping tools together. So what you might have to do is batch. You have to do one that is just like a cropping and then another that is uh, creating candy from those edges. So uh, I think this is everything I need. I'm just going to run this, and we'll see what happens. So as you run this, you'll see it produce a new folder called Canny. Um, and then inside of that, you'll see there are a number of images. And if we look at these images, you will see that it's produced some edges. Now, um, what you might notice is that like there's a lot of edges here, right? Like there's This seems like it's a little bit overkill, right? It's finding so many edges. Um, and there are some tools you can use uh, within dataset tools to reduce this. So one thing you can do is you can actually look at blurring. Uh, you can blur the image a little bit, and then you can um, reproduce uh, your, your, your edges from that. So let's look at that method. Um, I'm just going to quit this now, and I'm going to press up, and that's going to give me uh, the exact same command, and I want to add some stuff to this. So I'm going to add blur type. And there's a couple different blurs you can use here. So you'll see here... Um, inside of blur type, there is Gaussian and median. Um, median is good if you have like a salt and peppery image that you want to sort of reduce the blur in. Um, Gaussian tends to be the one that most people use. It's what your uh, Photoshop blur looks like. So I'm going to in, paste in Gaussian. Um, and then the other thing I want to set is I want to set a blur amount. So um, the, way these, the way these filters work is the higher the number, the more blurry the image gets. Um, this is set to a very, very conservative one. Um, that just adds a little bit of blur. But I'm just going to change this and let's do let's do three. This is something I recommend you play with, like change your numbers and just sort of see what different outputs you get. So I'm going to change this output folder to be WCanny um, Gaussian and then three. And then we can actually compare these images together. So while this runs, um, I can go over here and I can look at these. So I'm going to open up, let me open up seven bottom and show and see how this changed. So there's seven bottom. Um, there's also seven bottom. 
Okay, so now when we look at these, these are pretty different images, right? Um, you'll see that there's a little bit of change. I don't think this is the same image. Uh, <laughs> that's interesting. Oh, did I open the wrong one? I think I opened the wrong one. Okay, that's why. Um, okay, so now we look at these two, and you'll see uh, there's a little bit of change here, not too much. Um, you'll see, especially like here on the left edge, that we've reduced pretty dramatically like what this... Um, let me actually pull up this as well. And seven bottom. Okay, so now we can sort of see what the original image looked like as well. Okay, so realistically, like if you look at this image, there really shouldn't be that much texture in this edge, right? Because um, realistically, like, you know, there's a little bit of this texturing here, but you don't really want all those edges. So I might actually increase the the blur on this more. This is sort of like, this is the process of trying to figure out what you would want to do. Um, but either way, these are the tools that exist for you. You can change them. Um, I can quickly, let me quickly do median as well, and I can sure show you how that's, that will differ. So median, blur amount. Um, let's try, uh, let's just keep it at three, so that way we know, whoops. Um, I'm gonna change the file name. So let's just uh, do this. That way we can just compare them side by side. Okay, so this is now being created, median three. And we want seven bottom. So uh, let me just open this up. Okay, there we go. Um, so see that each of these has a slightly different look to it, right? So now it's kept a little bit more of the texture, not too much actually. Um, I find that median, especially at, and Gaussian, especially at smaller sizes, really won't change too much. There's some very slight differences in the textures, but for the most part, it's going to stay the same. Um, so you can play with these and sort of see what you want to do. Uh, that covers everything for just the canny process. So the next thing I want to talk about is the canny picks to picks process. Um, so if you've done anything with picks to picks, you know um, that you usually have to pair up your images side by side. So you need to compare them pair, pair to pair. Um, so the way to do this uh, in this process is actually two steps. So the first thing I want to do is I want to actually crop my uh, inputs. So I'm going to use the process type of crop to square. Let's see, so this crop to square. And the input folder is still the same. The output folder is w. And I'm gonna leave this just as is. And I want to set the uh, max size. Let's say 512. So this is gonna crop all my images. Square 512. Um, so I'm just gonna stop this and I use the same process. Okay, so now I have a folder of square cropped images. They're all 512. This is everything I need. Um, so the next thing I want to do is I want to take this folder and I want to um, change the process type to canny picks to picks. And this time I'm going to change my input folder. This. And then I want output to be w canny picks to picks. Okay, I'm going to keep file extension as JPEG. Um, I am going to actually uh, blur type Gaussian, and let's make our blur size a little bit larger. Blur amount, um, let's do seven. Okay, so now that I've set this to canny pick to picks, it's actually going to produce a combined image together. Um, let's just run this and we can see what it looks like. So we come over here and do canny picks to picks. You'll see that what it's done is it's actually merged these images together. And what I think is really interesting is this was the image we had before, right? See how different it is with seven? It might also be a change of like, because I scaled things down, because I cropped things, that now the blur is a little bit different, right? It actually cut off that edge where there was a lot more uh, imagery. So this might actually be going too far now. Um, like you'll see these two images, which are pretty blurry and therefore aren't actually finding an edge, um, are in it all black. So this might be going too far. So I might come back and actually like reduce this back down to three or maybe try five. Um, the important thing to note for the blur amount is that it needs to be an odd number. Um, that just has to do with the way that the process happens. So you want to make sure that you are not over blurring 
or not trying to input uh, an even number because you will get an error. So this is basically the process to build, to use both canny and canny picks to picks. Um, at this point, uh, like you should have all the tools you need to be able to build your own picks to picks model. Um, let me know if you have any questions in either the Slack channel or on YouTube. Thanks.